my presentation will be about a class of fully nonlinear PDEs, which can be approached by a dynamical system theory. So let me tell you what kind of equation I will consider. So we will consider fully nonlinear elliptic equation of this type, where here there is a fully nonlinear operator, which I will indicate with the M plus or minus, which are usually called Pucci's extremal operators that I will define in a moment. They depend in a nonlinear way on the second, uh, the, the, the matrix of the second derivatives of the function U. And there is a term which is a power of uh, the unknown function U with an exponent P bigger than one. So uh, this will be a problem, it will be posed in an open set omega in Rn, dimension greater or equal than two, but uh, mostly greater than three. And uh, whenever omega has a boundary, we will impose a Dirichlet boundary condition. So what are these operators, these Pucci's operators? As you can see, they could, define, they could be defined in two different ways. The first uh, one uh, using an inf and sup definition uh, give, takes into account that these operators are uh, called uh, extremal operator. But let me point out more uh, mostly the second definition. Uh, these operators are defined as some of the gain values. Mu i are the gain values of the symmetric n by n matrix M. And uh, as you can see, the, uh, this constant small lambda and capital lambda, which in general are different, the small lambda will be mostly, will be uh, smaller than uh, lambda, sometimes equal to lambda. Then uh, you are giving, in a sense, a different weight to the negative and the positive eigenvalue. Okay, so uh, when, why these, uh, these operators are important. These Pucci's operators are important because they, in a sense, they allow to define the whole class of uniformly elliptic fully nonlinear operators. And they play in uh, the context of a fully nonlinear equation, the same role that the Laplacian plays for uh, uh, linear uniformly elliptic uh, operators. So they are very important also to study the regularity, the regularity of a solution of full nonlinear elliptic equation. This is very well described in a classical book by Caffarelli and, Ca Caffarelli and Cabré. And also uh, they appear, they were studied in the context of a stochastic control theory. Uh, as I told you, they are given, defined by sum of eigenvalues. When the two constants, small lambda and capital lambda, are the same, then of course uh, you just uh, the operator just reduce to a multiple of the trace of the Hessian matrix of U. So which means it's just a multiple of the Laplacian. So we are back in the linear theory. So uh, because of this asymmetry between the the way you consider the negative and the positive again values of the matrix, uh, we can define a kind of uh, dimensional like numbers, which are defined in this way for the two different operators. And uh, you can see that when small lambda is equal to capital lambda, this is exactly the dimension of the space. So therefore, when you have this asymmet asymmetry between these two parameters, then uh, they are called uh, effective dimension for these operators. So this dimension, I'm, uh, I'm writing this, uh, this dimension because they play a key role for the existence or non-existence of a solution for the problem for the PDE that I'm going to study. Okay, so let us assume that these uh, dimensions are bigger than two. Omega is a general uh, smooth, uh, let's say bounded domain, then a first result obtained in 2011 11 tells you that whenever the exponent is sufficiently small, smaller than these two constant, then in any bounded domain, you have existence of a positive or negative, uh, let's say not a chain changing solution. So uh, the, since the operators and the, 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 this fully nonlinear equation are non-variational in, in their structure, 
the, the way you can prove this kind of result is by fixed point theorem, which relies on a priori estimates, which in turn is derived from some uh, Liouville the theorems, which, is, uh, which have been derived in the, line, in the latest years. So uh, when uh, small lambda is equal to capital lambda, then uh, this uh, first, uh, let's say first uh, exponent p plus or p minus coincide and they coincide with what is usually called the Serren exponent. Uh, of course, these exponents do not represent the optimal threshold for the existence of positive solution. This is very well known even in the semi-linear case. So the question is whether we can define some uh, better, let's say, critical exponent, which really uh, divide the set of the exponent into uh, classes of exponent for which you have existence or non-existence of solutions. So this is very well known in the case of the Laplacian. There is a critical exponent which can be defined in several ways and which is just the critical Sobolev exponent for the bending of the speech H10 into L2 star uh, minus one, because this is the variational formulation which comes uh, from the function associated to the Sobolev embeddings. So uh, our question then now is then to determine some, uh, some critical exponent in the context of the fully nonlinear equations. So uh, what I'm going to, to, to say is that this critical exponent indeed exists, at least in the radial setting. Why the radial setting is peculiar? Because uh, when you have a function which depends only on the modulus of x, so let's call it r, then it's uh, easy to write the eigenvalues of a dash matrix of a certain fun C2 function u as uh, uh, explicitly because they are given by the second derivative, which is, gives you a simple eigenvalue, and the first derivative divided by r, which has a multiplicity n minus one. So if you know the sign of u prime and u double prime, you can explicitly write the, the, the Pucci's operator for any given C2 function. So uh, the radial domains then uh, which uh, you can uh, consider for the, in the radial case are uh, if they are bounded, a ball or an annulus. If they are not bounded, the whole space over the exterior of a ball. So uh, I will mainly describe the case of a ball over a RN just to not to be too, too long. Uh, just let me point out that in the case of the ball, there is a result by Dalio and Sirakov, which uses the classical moving plane method to prove that every positive solution is indeed radial. So uh, in the case of the ball, the radiality is not, uh, for positive solution, is not really an assumption. Then by all the techniques uh, and rescaling the equation, by using the invariance by rescaling the equation, one can prove that indeed the, the positive solution in the ball is unique. So from now on, uh, let me just consider the case of M plus in order not to uh, repeat uh, all the times uh, the notation, the results for both operators. The, the results for both operators are very similar, sometimes obtained in a slightly different uh, way. So uh, when we are in the radial setting, so our PD reduces to an OD, then by classical result in OD, it's not difficult to prove that the first derivative of your solution is indeed negative, so uh, as long as it stays positive, as long as the solution is positive. So this allows to tell you that there are n minus one eigenvalues which are negative. And so uh, the, the operators that you are considering, the Pucci, the Pucci plus operator, depends only on the sign of the second derivative, which is the remaining eigenvalue. So when u double prime is negative, you can see here that you have an equation which is just reduced to small lambda times the Laplacian and radial coordinates equal u to the r. But when u double prime is positive, as you can see here, there is an asymmetry with respect to these two coefficient for the first derivative and for the second derivative. So this is not anymore the Laplace equation. 
Now, uh, uh, so what are these critical exponents? In 2003, a uh, very interesting paper by Felmer and Quass introduced uh, this critical exponent in the radial setting. How do, did they define them? In, uh, in the case of the Laplace, and you can use many different uh, definitions, in particular, as, as I was remembering before, you can use the fact that uh, you have a critical Sobolev exponent for the classical Sobolev embeddings. Here we are in non-variational settings, so Fermer and Quass defined a critical exponent using the asymptotic behavior, the solution at infinity in the whole space. So let me give this definition. Take a positive radial solution in the whole space Rn. We will say that u is fast decaying if when r goes to infinity, u are the case with this power here. So it's like one over R with this exponent n tilde plus minus two. We say that U uh, is slow decaying if it decays at infinity with this power alpha, which is this exponent here, which is a, this number. And we say instead that U is a pseudo slow decaying if uh, at infinity it oscillates uh, yeah, keeping this, uh, in a sense, this decay with this exponent, but as you can see, the, the limit the lim sup at infinity are different. Uh, this, uh, the first two kind of um, decaying solution were already considered in the case of the Laplacian. The last one is, uh, was introduced by Feldman and Quass uh, because they appear in the context of fully nonlinear equations. Okay, so the theorem they could prove is that there exists indeed a critical exponent, let's call them P star plus, which can be bound from below and from above by this number, and which has this uh, property. So uh, gives you the precise range of the exponent for which you can have a solution in the ball or in Rn or non-existence of a solution and also uh, prescribes uh, the decay of the solution uh, at infinity in the case they are defined in the whole space array. So when a p is smaller than this number, then you do not have a solution in array, no non non trivial solution, but you have a unique solution in the ball. If p is equal to the critical exponent, then you have a unique fast decaying radial solution in Rn. If p is bigger, then this uh, critical exponent, then uh, you have uh, a unique uh, either pseudo slow or slow decaying radial solution in Rn. And when P is greater or equal than this exponent, then indeed you do not have any solution in the ball. So there is an alternative between this, uh, having a solution in a ball or having a solution in Rn. So the proof that uh, Felmer and Quass provided was not so easy. They used a phase plane analysis uh, using uh, an endem Fowler uh, system. They used also a quite sophisticated tool which consists in differentiating the solution with respect to the exponent P. And uh, they could finally deduce the result, but uh, as I am saying, in, uh, in a quite difficult way. An alternative proof of the same result is, uh, was given recently in a paper by uh, Liliane Maia, Gabriele Saller, Nordberg, and myself, by using a dynamical system approach, which made indeed the problem very geometric and quite simple to attack. And this is indeed the aim of my presentation to show how the, the, the methods, uh, the, the theory of dynamical system can help to get results for this fully nonlinear problem. So uh, another advantage, advantage, advantage of my, our method is that we could study at the same time also the singular solutions. Singular means solution which blow up at the origin. Let me tell you that this uh, method, uh, using the dynamical system to study radial PD, was uh, already used in a previous paper by Bido Verone and Giacomini in the case of the Laplace. So we could also treat at the same time other kind of solution, for example, in uh, exterior domains, in the exterior of a ball. And so it, 
it seemed to us that it was really a method which could uh, was very suitable to try to treat the, this fully nonlinear problem. Okay, so let me let me describe uh, what is the dynamical system we consider. So let me write uh, first the second order uh, PDE that we are considering. I'm just slightly modifying it, adding a weight because we could uh, even treat this kind of a problem when you have a, a radial weight with an exponent a. And uh, we con will uh, mostly consider regular solution, so regular up to zero. But uh, uh, sometimes uh, I will uh, mention that uh, results can be obtained also in the case of a singular solution. So this means when solution blow up at the origin. Okay, so this is our problem. Now I take uh, the function u uh, and I transform it uh, using its first derivative into uh, two different uh, function of the variable t, which is just the log of r. So we define these two new variables, x and z, in this way. And uh, using, OK, this notation, we uh, will able to transform so this pd into this dynamical system in the two variables x and z. x dot and z dot are the derivative with respect to time. Now, because uh, as you can see here, uh, x and z depends on uh, u prime and u, and we already know that u prime is negative, while u is a positive, because we are studying a positive solution, then there is the minus in, in front of this, uh, these formulas. So this means that uh, the x and z variable are in the first uh, quadrant of the x z plane which is indeed easy to see that it's an invariant set for the dynamical system. So uh, the, solution, the solutions of our problem corresponds to solution of this dynamical system. This dynamical system is a quadratic dynamical system and is not too difficult to study because uh, as I will try to describe in a moment, all the relevant set which determine the behavior of the orbit of this dynamical system, so the flow lines in particular, are just very simple geometrical objects, actually just lines in the plane. And also uh, in uh, this dynamical system, which depends on the exponent p, and the, the aim is, is indeed to derive results uh, according to the value of this p, and in particular to deduce the existence of a critical exponent, in this dynamical system, the dependence on P is very simple because it, uh, it's only in this, uh, the second equation. And it's not too difficult to deduce a kind of a monotonicity or the behavior of the orbits with respect to the exponent P, which is crucial, crucial to determine the critical exponent. OK, so what are the relation between the solution that we want, the kind of solution of the P plus is the second order PDE, actually the second order ODE because we are in the radial setting, and the orbit of the dynamical system. Okay, uh, so for the, for the second order ODE, we would like to study regular solution in the ball, which, are, which means that our solution, which are regular up to zero, and that at a certain radius R just become zero. Then we would like to study the regular solution in Rn, so again, regular up to zero e uh, defined in the whole uh, interval zero plus infinity. Then uh, uh, if I have a time, I will say something about the singular solution, which are singular at the origin, and also about uh, exterior domain solution, which are uh, radial solution, which are zero at a certain radio R, and then can be either defined for all R uh, up to plus infinity or just go to zero at, at, in another radius R2. So it is important to understand this kind of solution to what orbit of the dynamical system they correspond. So the first type, the solution in the ball, it's possible to prove, I mean, you have to, to do some uh, computation, but it's possible to prove that they correspond to orbit of our dynamical system, which is a dynamical system in the x and z variable, when, uh, where the variable x blows up in finite time 
while z decays to zero in uh, finite time. E, and they, at minus infinity, they approach a stationary point. Then uh, the second kind of a solution that we would like to study, the regular solution in the whole Rn, are, uh, corresponds to orbit, which are defined in the whole interval minus infinity plus infinity. So at minus infinity, they should converge to some stationary point, which should take, take uh, into account the regularity of the solution at zero, while at plus infinity could go either to an equilibrium point or to a periodic orbit. And then uh, there will be also the, the, the singular solution, which corresponds to other orbit, or uh, also the solution in exterior domain, which corresponds to another kind of orbit. Okay, so in order to study the dynamics induced by this uh, dynamical system, it's obviously very important to study the existence of stationary or equilibrium points and periodic orbits. So uh, the, this uh, dynamical system uh, has indeed three relevant stationary points, which are, uh, I, will, I will describe, uh, I will show you a picture in a moment. So there are three stationary points. Indeed, there is also the origin 0, 0 in the XZ plane, which is a stationary point, but uh, this never enters in the study of our uh, second order problem. So the first stationary point and zero is a saddle point. A zero is also another saddle point, at least for P bigger than this number, which is the range that, uh, of P's for we, in which we are interested. And then uh, this last point is a sink or a source, and its role is very important to deduce uh, the, the kind of a solution that we can have. Then, uh, of course, it's interesting to know the periodic orbits. So the periodic orbits can be studied using what is called in dynamical system Dulux criterion. And it allows, in our case, to say that there are no periodic orbits if P is smaller or equal than this exponent, while there are for P bigger than this other exponent. Uh, let me just point out that in the case of the Laplacian, uh, periodic orbit never exists except just at the critical exponent. So this is a main big difference between the fully nonlinear case and the semi-linear case. Okay, uh, while studying this dynamical system, there are, as I told you, there are certain lines, so very simple geometric uh, object, which uh, allow to to determine the flow lines of the dynamical system. In particular, this line here, I will describe it in a moment, takes into account uh, the fact that uh, your orbit comes from a solution which changes concavity and convexity. The, this, uh, this divides the plane in two parts where, uh, which corresponds to the, in terms of the solution U of the second order, the regions where U is uh, uh, concave or convex. And then these are these other line where X dot is zero, Z dot is zero, and uh, which are important to, to, un to understand how the orbit can turn according to where the X dot becomes a zero, Z dot becomes a zero. Then there are uh, these particular lines uh, which we call blow up lines, because if you cross this line, then you have a blow up in finite time forward. When you cross this line backward in time, then you have a blow up in backward finite time. Okay, so let me uh, show you the picture. So we are in the first uh, quadrant of the X and Z plane. So here our uh, stationary point and zero is a central point. So there are there is only one orbit which comes out from N0, it's this red arrow. A0 is a, a second important stationary point. It's also a central point. There is only one uh, there is only one trajectory which arrives at A0. I mean relevant for us, you see there is also a trajectory here in the z-axis and the one on the x-axis, but we never touch these lines with the, the, uh, our orbit. And then there is this M0 can be either, as I told you, an attractor, a sink, or a source. And these are the relevant lines. This is the concavity lines. These are the lines which indicate how the vector field 
which uh, determines the dynamical system behaves, and also here. Okay, so uh, finally, uh, so what is the, the, the translation between the uh, solution we want to study for the PDE and the solution we want to study for the dynamical system? So, uh, I mean, if one studies the correspondence, uh, the correspondence between uh, these two objects, one can see that the regular solution for um, the PDE corresponds to, uh, for the second order problem, corresponds to orbit starting from N0. So whatever orbit comes from N0 corresponds to a solution of the PDE, of the, sorry, of the second order equation, which is regular at the origin. Then fast decaying solution, which are very important to define the critical exponent, corresponds to orbit which arrives at A0 forward in time. So whatever, whatever arrives at A0 uh, is an orbit which corresponds to a solution of the second order differential equation, which is defined uh, for all R up to plus infinity and which is a fast decaying at plus infinity. Okay, singular solution corresponds to orbit starting from M0. Regular solution in the ball, this is also an important solution we want to study, corresponds to solution which blow up forward in final time. So in our picture means that the, a regular solution which starts at N0 and crosses this line, this vertical line L, which corresponds to blow up in the variable X in finite time. And then we could also have other kind of a solution in exterior of a ball, et cetera. Okay, so what is the result that we can prove use this dynamical system? Since everything we want to get for the second order problem has been translated into uh, information that we get for, uh, for the orbit of the dynamical system. This means uh, in particular that existence and the uniqueness of the critical exponent P star plus means existence and the uniqueness of a critical exponent P star plus for the dynamical system, such that there exists an orbit which connects the point N0 with the point A0. So, this allows to define the critical exponent in terms of the dynamical system as the only exponent for which you have an orbit which starts from N0, so it's regular at the origin, and which uh, arrives at A0, which means that it's fast decaying. So, and the theorem that we can prove is indeed the, the following one. There exists a unique critical exponent, P star plus, such that gamma P star plus, which is the, the, the orbit which exits for, from N0, arrives at A0. Moreover, if P is smaller than P star plus, gamma p blows up in forward time, which as I told you, corresponds to have solutions in the bullet, which is exactly what we want. And if p is bigger instead of this critical exponent, then the trajectory starting from M0 arrives at M0, this stationary point, or at the periodic orbit around M0, depends on the value of p. And so uh, the corresponding solution of the second order uh, differential equation is either slow decaying or pseudo slow decaying. So this theorem obtained in the dynamical system for the dynamical system gives you exactly the result for the fully nonlinear problem. So let just me let me conclude just to showing you some pictures, which uh, which allows to understand what is the dynamics according to the value of this exponent. So here, this is the picture for the critical exponent. So as you can see, there is only one trajectory which starts from N0, the red one, and which arrives at A0. When we are at the critical exponents, so what happens to, what are the flow lines? So we have that M0 in this case is a source. 
So there are trajectory exiting from M0 uh, backward in time, uh, coming from M0 from minus infinity. This corresponds to singular solution. And they go around, you see, to there are also critical, there are also orbits, uh, periodic orbits, sorry. And then this green line, okay, though it's not obvious to understand, they correspond to solutions which blow up in finite time and are defined in exterior domains. Then what is the picture when the P is smaller than the critical exponent? Then in this case, the regular solution, which starts from N0, so the regular trajectory, blows up in finite time. So as you can see, it crosses the... There is here a vertical line which tells you that there is a blow up in the X variable. And uh, as you can see from M0, there are uh, other solution which start from minus infinity, which corresponds to singular solution. And the gray, again, the green ones corresponds to, do, uh, to exterior domain solutions. Then what is the picture for the P bigger than the critical exponent? When the P is bigger than the critical exponent, then uh, you do not have any more solution in the ball, so a regular solution in the ball. So, but the solution starting from M0, the orbit starting from M0, as you can see, goes to M0. Going to M0 means that it's a slow decaying solution, which is exactly what we want for certain range of uh, exponent, but for P bigger than P star, we could also have this picture here that around the stationary point M0, there is some uh, periodic orbit, the yellow one. And then uh, uh, what happens to the, the regular trajectory? It starts from N0 and goes around this uh, periodic orbit. What does this mean? It means that you have uh, what we have called pseudo slow decaying solution. So this means oscillating solutions at infinity with a certain decay. Okay, I hope to have given you an idea of how the, the, this fully nonlinear problem can be studied by the dynamical system. So thank you for your attention.